on the line, ladies and gentlemen. Big GD from Grape Street Watts, Baby Low Crib. How are you, man? Hey, how you doing? I said what's up, man. Yeah, doing good, man. Doing good. Thanks for joining the show, Playboy. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, so um shit, let's let's jump right into it, man. Um explain the Baby Low Crips. The Watts Baby Low Crips is a movement that started um actually after uh WBG. Okay. Now WBG is um you know that's that's where we came from you know what i'm saying like my family started wbg so therefore my family started grape street but it was taken from what my family did with the wbg part when the the blacks and uh hispanics was together as one you know we, we still together you know what i'm saying but you know what I'm saying? You got other uh, different factors that factor in it now with the, uh, you know, Serenia 13 and stuff. So, you know, they have their own little program. We have our own, us being Crips, but we still together and share the same hood. But the Baby Lopes was created uh, from that. So when Watch Baby Low Crip came out in the 80s, it just pretty much, like, took over. So anything from that point to now is Watch Baby Low Crip. You know what I'm saying? So... So you still got older homies that's WBG, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, they like this generation is all baby loaves. Okay. So what year did you get put on? Uh, 1993. Okay. Take me back to that day. That day, uh, I was coming back from school. And um, the homies, you know, they asked me, like, you ready to get caught on the hood. Now, me, knowing who my family was, I knew I really didn't have to go through all that. But at the same time, I didn't want to live off uh, nobody else's name or reputation because I know coming from my projects, that ain't going to get you far. Nobody really care about what you, uh, somebody else did. Uh, it be your daddy or whoever, your grandpa, uncles, they don't care. It's all about what you did. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't want to live off of their rep, so... You know, um, at first I was like, man, I'm going to see, I don't know, I'm gonna see why, why some is the deal. But, you know, the homie, you know, the project is grimy, so the homie just got off on me. He fired on me, so after he fired on me, everybody else fired on me. So now we fighting, but my focus was on him. You know what I'm saying? Like, the homie that fired on my focus was on him. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm getting hit in all type of angles, directions, everything. I'm, but... I just seemed like black. I didn't even feel none of it. <laughs> I just it was it, to me it was like a head up with me and him, but really I'm getting jumped, you know what I'm saying? But um back in them days we uh we we did three cordons. One you wasn't just done with one. You you had to go through that process three times, you know what I'm saying? So so you know, I ended up doing it uh I ended up going through that three times. What what are some of the gangs that you guys are surrounded by? Surrounded by, you know, we got the uh, the first town Mafia Crips right there, right next to us. You know, you got the PJ Watts Crips, the Ten Line Gangsta Crips. You got the uh, Badass Gangsta Crips, the Bonnie on the Watts Bloods, the Hacienda Village Bloods, Circle City Pyros, Nine Deuce Bishops. All that's right there. Uh, Bebop Watts, you know, Hack Gang Watts. All that's right there. Um, Great Home Street over there. Captain Avenue Crips right there. Right. You got you got the blue gang mafia crips right there, right right next to us. Like we got it's a lot of little shit right there next to us. The nut hoods ain't too far. You got the Wigan Colonial Watts. I went to Wigan Elementary. I went to their school. They are enemies, and, and you know since I stayed on that end of the side of the projects on the hundred and second Juniper side, I had to go to their school instead of going to our school on hundred and second. So. You know what I'm saying? I, I I was going to enemy school at uh, elementary, fighting them every day just to uh, walk back home. Three Greedo. Great. Spending time in jail right now. Prison, actually. Um, Correct. But he was, shit, he was destined on uh, to, to be a superstar. Yeah, man. Oh, Three Greedo is close. You know, I done uh, been into, in the studio with him when he was, uh, before, you know, recording songs and things of that nature, you know, I done uh, thug with him on the streets, you know, that's coming from the hood, man, 303, man, you know what I'm saying, probably got the Jordan Downs, you know, we support him, 
you know, I was going to all his little performances he was having uh, leading up to the time that he did turn himself in. But, um, yeah, 03, yeah, me and 03 is close. How does it feel when somebody from the from the hood just, you know, they're blowing up and, and people in, in New York are playing this song from a dude that grew up two, two houses from you? Well, I mean, it depends on which way you look at it. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, I'm a day one great street, so, like, all my life, you know, we've been in the spotlight. We've been in the limelight. Yeah. Been, you know what I'm saying? Them niggas, so it's like, you know, like, you know, to us, it's, it's, it's what's supposed to happen. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's regular. Like, you can look at 03. You can look at Grapes from Around the World, Black Boy JB, NLE Chopper. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Jay Fizzle and all these type of dudes. Moochie Great. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got so much talent, it's ridiculous, man. But but at the same time, whenever you want to talk about that, we're going to get into that as far as what I'm trying to get established in that. Yeah, you no, know, that has something to do with it this on, topic. Actually, because, actually, bring it on, yeah. Well, yeah, the, the reason, see, right now, the big homies, you know, like, we got a record label going. It's great owned, you know, mm -hmm. great operated. Straight out the Jordan Downs, One Vine, Entertainment, Records. So, right now, what we're trying to do, you see the names we just uh, named, mm -hmm. they got a whole lot of talent mm -hmm. from our section or from our community so what we trying to do is you know in, instead of the, letting the next greedo or the next nle chop or black boy jb slip through the cracks and, and you know mess with somebody else we want them to mess with their folks I like you know what i'm saying so that's the whole idea of it so so we can keep everything in-house so so therefore you know what i'm saying everything we do we control so you know um Oh, this is just a way I'm a word it, but we're not trying to be no slaves to nobody. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, no, that's dope, dude. Listen to that, ladies and gentlemen. That's that's really how it should be, man. The neighborhood that you grew up in, that way you guys can just keep building and building and and bring more attention and more money to, to your neighborhood, fix it up, do whatever you got to do. That's that's dope. I love that idea, man. Yeah, I mean, you got to think about it, man, like, like, the way game banging is right now, you know what I'm saying? Like, you have no choice but to learn from all the things that happened in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at it like, you know, a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, they glorify this lifestyle, you know what I'm saying? And and, and, and they still watch these movies and they stuck in those days and they not understanding. You know, people in those days was going to commit murders and getting out after 10 years. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. People in those days, you know what I'm saying? The projects now in my hood and the Jordan Down projects, it's coming everywhere. Oh, really? You know what I'm saying? Oh, no shit. Every, everywhere. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they bulletproof. You can't shoot them down or nothing. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Like, we used to, but you can't do it no more. You know what I'm saying? So, 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 so it's, it's like, it's like you'll be, you'll be a fool not to evolve with the times. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We all got homies that, that, you know, like die and go to jail for life and it's been happening every year you know and and i remember like i think it was um i believe it was 2005 i think i went to 11 of my homies funerals you know what I'm saying? wow dog and and, yeah. and i'm thinking in my head like cuz like is this all this that's we gonna get out of this you know what i'm saying damn is this it you know what i'm saying There's a lot of my troops going to jail free young gd my little homie you know what i'm saying got double life you know what i'm saying he got that at 20 years old you know? But I'm saying, like, is that all? You know what I'm saying? That's all we're going to accomplish out of this life? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, 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 it's hard. They can, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. So it's like we got to make something out of it because at the end of the day, a lot of us got kids. And, you know, we got a lot of people, other people, kids who look up to us. And, and you know, we like they role models. So, so, you know what I'm saying? Like, instead of leading them to the grave, you know what I'm saying? We need to try to lead them to something else. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not saying you can't be who you be. I'm not saying you can't thug and do whatever you do. But what I'm saying is you just got to, you know what I'm saying, open up your your eyes and, you know what I'm saying, like, realize that you got to you gotta, you gotta be able to adapt and evolve or, or, or you're going you gonna to be washed up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're an intelligent dude, man. Keep that shit going. And, and we're going to help you promote that any way we can right here.
I mean, something that just recently happened. Uh, Pop Smoke was killed right here in L.A. in the Hollywood Hills specifically. 3,000 miles away from his home. He's in New York. Uh, I think he's a Crip, actually. GS something. I don't know if it's GS9 or whatever the case is. But what are your thoughts on rappers, you know, how they should move in L.A. and, and specifically in other places where they're not from? I think he's talking about G-Stone, Crip, or something like that. It's for, for Bobby Schmurter, right, probably? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, only, the only reason why I'm familiar with that game is because, you know, Great Street, we everywhere. We worldwide, you know what I'm saying? So, so uh, we got folks everywhere. And so the the homies we do have, like, in that area, in the New York area, they, um, they inform us about, like, different things in their area, you know, different gangs or whatever, so... I heard it like that. Before that, I never like really knew about it. But I'm gonna say it like this: like if you gang banging, like and, and you, you you color banging, cripple blood, uh, and all that type of stuff, you, people gotta understand. Like um, it originated out here in California. You know what I'm saying? So if you if you banging any type of crip blood, blood power or anything that was started here where we from you know what i'm saying you 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 definitely got to be connected you know what i'm saying you need people to where you can call on when you come out here you know what i'm saying they can pull up on you or you can pull up on them and they got genuine love for you because because you know what i'm saying like and and, and for instance we can go back to like we could say like a, a black boy jb or nle chapel mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying they come out here Guess what they where they gonna go? They're good. They're going right to you. All right. So that's my point. Or are we going right to them? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So so instead of you thinking you finna run down on them and do whatever you finna do to them, you know what I'm saying? You gotta understand it's a difference when you come out here and you're not protected by nobody and somebody do something to you. Who gonna rise for for you? Yeah. What yeah. type of war they gotta get into it with in Cali over you. Yeah. They don't got to get into it with nobody. Yeah. You're like you want to link duck. with nobody. You're like a sitting They duck. just got away with some shit. You know what I'm saying? Now, imagine if you link with some folks. Mm-hmm. Imagine if you're from a hood that's out here or you got the uh, proper okay to to, to be what you be bang what you banging as far as uh, red or blue, purple, mm-hmm. whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's a uh, different situation. You know what I'm saying? If you don't got the proper okay, you're not connected to nobody. Something happens, nobody cares. Like, nobody even, like, we even look for answers. It don't matter. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But if you connect to something happens, guess what? It can be a big war start on these California streets, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. over you, and you from thousands of miles away, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? But it can really be a war that start over you the last 40, 50 years mm-hmm. just because you connected. Mm-hmm. That's the big difference. So that when somebody come at you, they're going to be more hesitant to do something to you when they see you with certain folks. And they'll be like, oh, shit, he fuck with them? Oh, he with them? Because you know if you do something to him, you got to do something to them. And if mm-hmm. you do something to them, they coming back. Yeah. And that's going to be a sustained war. And it ain't going to be nothing that just go go away and be swept under the rug and you just got away with it that that night it's gonna be a whole different story so that that's why it's, it's real important for people to be connected man and i'm gonna say like this if, if you don't if you are a, a a star whoever you are you got money you know what i'm saying you're somebody of importance and, and you and you want to come to cali and you want to chill and you want to go out and go to places and you want to feel safe shit call me <laughs> on some real shit because I'm gonna keep it real. We working on the uh, we working on the security company too, just for those purposes. I like that. That's a niche, and it's gonna be it's gonna be one vine also. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not saying call me for nothing. They call me, and and, mm-hmm. and when you pull up on these places, you gonna have the great streets with you. Mm-hmm. And, and and if and if they want an issue with you, that mean they want an issue with Great Street, and there ain't too many people that want that. your thoughts on somebody like a Takashi 69 <laughs> man look you know we said about a G code man it's, it's certain things you can do and certain things you can't do man and, and when you when you break certain codes like the thing that he did snitching that's that's like to a point of no return you know what I'm saying I don't give a fuck 
what you talking about? Like it, you, 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 you know, good, you bad. You know what I'm saying? You know good, like, for the rest of your life. So, I mean, anybody that supported snitch, you know what I'm saying? You might as well, you know what I'm saying? You might as well say you're a snitch for yourself. But at the same time, you got to look, you got to understand which point of view you're looking at it. A regular civilian is not held up to the same standards in regards that I'm held up to. You know what I'm saying? A regular civilian, civilian can, can tell, and it's okay. No, no repercussions, no consequences. You know, if I do it, you know what I'm saying? Or somebody like six nine who portraying to be in this lifestyle do it, then you know that that's you you all bad point of no return. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How responsible do you think the gang is for letting him get that close, knowing that he wasn't about that life? They knew. I mean, from my knowledge, he wasn't even really from their hood. He just nope. supported them because they they looked out for him. Like he wasn't really official officially one of them so so in in that sense that's where it falls on them you know what i'm saying because you got you got somebody out here false claiming your hood you know what i'm saying for everybody to see it not just confined to your neighborhood like for for the whole world to see it you know what i'm saying and on top of that you support me and not and, and not just supporting you you're doing shit for this man like 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 you grew up with him you know what i'm saying like 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 where i'm from you know what i'm saying like we don't just let anybody just come over here and be a part of this. Like you gotta, you gotta think of it like this: if you're coming over here to where I'm from, right? Where did you come from? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And wherever you came from, why wasn't you accepted there when you had to come over here? Mm -hmm. You could have got ran off over there, did some whole shit and everything, and try to move and start. I don't know. Basically, what I'm saying is we don't know you. You know what I'm saying? So don't never put your trust in somebody like that that you don't even know from Adam. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's yeah, that's their fault. And mm -hmm. you know they 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 rep the consequences for for doing that. But you know that's just you know that's a learning experience. Everybody, when you have people that that die or get locked up or go through certain experiences, you got to take that and apply that to your life and look at it as a learning experience. Don't look at it as oh that's just them and it ain't gonna happen to me. Yeah, you, you might be the next one that happened to. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta you gotta apply that to your life and take it and learn from it and make sure it ain't you. We're coming up on the year anniversary of Nipsey Hussle being killed tragically, April first. Damn, I can't believe it's already almost a year. Um, I want to talk with you and ask you specifically. I know how you feel. It's I'm sure you feel it was a shitty situation, but. Um, Specifically, is there any way that that could have been prevented or someone could prevent something like that happening to them? Uh, first off, man, rest in peace, Nipsey, because I did know him personally. I remember, uh, like, I think it was like 2003 or 2002, me and the boss players from the hood, they used to take me over to his house to record in the Open Hill 6 old. And he was actually like our engineer. He'd stay there the whole time while we rapping and singing and shit. And he'd just be on the computer doing what he do. And um, as far as his situation, I, I don't really know too much about his situation because I'm not from the west side. I'm from the east side. I'm from Washington. I really don't dip into their politics because that ain't my business. But, you know, I do, I do. You know, I'm human like you, so I do read certain things and look at certain things and see a lot of different people's opinions on what they thought happened or whatever. But, um, you know, that's just not my place to speak on that situation because, you know, I'm not from 6 mm -hmm. I'm not from the West Side, and I don't know. They politics, I don't know what was going on. My only relationship I knew with Nipsey was uh, music-based only, you know. So, so I didn't really know the politics side of him, you know what I'm saying, as far as the game, maybe politics side of him, so mm -hmm. yeah, so I, I can't really speak on it, you know what I'm saying, but yeah. I can say it's a uh, it's a uh, tragic situation, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. and, and he, was a, he was a severe loss to our city, you know, I, yeah. can, I can say that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. A couple significant things happened in your life, but actually, uh, specifically dealing with Watts, uh, the first one was the big truce back in 92, 93, whatever summer that was. Uh, right. PJ 
bounty hunters and you guys all got together, right? For a, for a truce. Right. I know you're young at that truce. time, but do you remember? Do you remember anything about it? Do you remember your your elders talking about it? What, what can you tell me about that time? Shit, I was there. You know what I'm saying? Shit. You know what I'm saying? Like like uh, it was it was you know just put just put it like this. I have a baby mother that's from Bounty Hunters. Wow, wow. You know what I'm saying? I also have a baby mom, a baby mom from Kwame Paru, but I have one from Bunny Hunter, so that should tell you right there, that right there is the effect of the peace treaty. Without the peace treaty, that could have never happened. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I couldn't, you know what I'm saying, really deal with them like that in that type of way. Like, you know, go over there to have that type of relationship with one of their females, you know what I'm saying? So, so, um, but other than that, you know, like like uh Sam, my cousin Sam from Bunny Hunters, you know what I'm saying? I just found out uh Killer Twan was my cousin from Bunny Hunters. I got other family members over there and the PJs and you gotta understand like we all been around each other for so long, everybody has had sex with everybody's family members, so everybody is related in some type of way. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to me it's like eventually it's gonna have to like it's gonna have to stop, man. And to tell you the truth, like the '92 uh, treaty was cool, but you know we had other treaties since then. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I think it was 2004, 2005. An incident happened that broke that up, and and ever since that one got broke up, we just been warring ever since from that point. Now everything think from like 2004, mm -hmm. it was either four or five from that point to 2020, we've been warring. Mm. Yeah. You so, know, so so, but. But we've been having talks. We've been having meetings. You know, I've been going to the, you know, like certain select people from from uh, the Jordan Downs and the uh, Nickerson Gardens. We've been having meetings over there in the hood. You know what I'm saying? It's recently, it's recently. I was going as recently as 2017 and 2018. I went to jail in 2018, so you know that stopped me from uh, going to the meeting. But we was having some good productive talks. But at the end of the day. You know, when you're dealing with thousands of members from each side, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, to just have, like, you know, six people, it was about six people from each gang representing thousands, you know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? It, it's, it's, it's like, the way I am is that, you know, I'm going, to, I'm going to tell people like it is, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and when I'm in meetings, I'm going to let it be known, like, I'm not going to hold my tongue, I'm not going to just tell people what they want to hear just in case people got other hidden agendas for re the reason why they want, you know, peace or whatever. So I just tell it like it is. I'll be real. And then I go back to the hood and talk to them and get their feedback. You know what I'm saying? And the only thing about that is it's, it's just like if you got if you got 30% that's, that's, that's willing to, you know what I'm saying, you know, have talks for, for peace so the kids can have a better future and all this. But you have 70% that's against it. You know what I'm saying? It, it don't matter how productive the talks is. It's going to, you know you know what I'm saying? Well, we've had some major peace treaties in L.A. to where people would have never thought. Was, I think it was the East Coast and Florencia. I had a big one. I know uh, Inglewood, the Queen Street, um, Inglewood, Trece, and... Uh, Crenshaw Mafia, I believe they all had a, you know, they're talking. So hopefully that'll happen in in your neighborhood, and you could build this one vine moment, and that vine can move on to the next project over and the project over, and you know what I'm saying you guys can unite. That'll be fucking dope, man. Um, so give that one more, um, one more um, promotion. Tell me where we can find you and how anybody who wants to be involved can be involved if you, they want to invest or you know whatever the case is. Where can they find you? Yeah, they can find me. They can just reach me on uh, Instagram, you know, because my IG, you can just follow me. It's not private or nothing like that. It's GD Grape Street, G E E D E E G R A P E S T. You know, and if they want to donate, they can donate um, on Cash App. It's Jordan Down Minutes Boys, J O R D A N D O W N. M E N A C E B O Y S. You know, we taking our donations and we do a lot of stuff for the kids too. You know, we do a lot of stuff for the hood. You know, we 
we give out uh different things uh you know food and you know we we, we do all types of stuff for even from the smallest just provide rides for people that can't go get home at night and they just been in the projects all day because you know a lot of people that live in projects you know a lot of them don't actually live in the projects no more you know they probably grew up there but they moved out you know they got a family they probably got a house somewhere or whatever but they always come back you know and and and, and they be having kids and you know they move with their parents and they might want to come be in the projects too all day but they got to get home at night you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. You know, it'd be real dangerous for people just, you know, just, just out there hanging out at certain times. So just little stuff like that, give them rides, you know, provide uh, supplies for school, all that type of stuff, man. But, you know, but to touch on what you were saying as far as uh, bringing people together through one bond, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's, um, that's definitely something that should be looked into. Mm -hmm. that, that's all I can say, you know what I'm saying? And, and I'm not going to sit here and say I'm uh, advocating for peace mm -hmm. or violence, but what I'm gonna say is, I just I I think people need love, man. A lot of a lot a lot of people forget what love is in our areas because you grow up so grimy and cold, and everybody taught that love is is a sign of weakness. You know what I'm saying? But but if 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 you have people that start loving each other more, you know what I'm saying? Then it'll be easier for people to get together. You know what I'm saying? And one one denominator that's going to bring people together is money. So if we can get this going and we can generate enough money, then we can talk about putting everybody on in a position to where they won't have to put themselves, take penitentiary chances to get diapers for their kids or to keep the lights on to put food on the table. They'll be getting fed through one bar, you know what I'm saying? It'll be just legit money, you know what I'm saying, that everybody earned, you know what I'm saying? And that can change people's minds and hearts towards other people when people is showing you love and they're helping you upgrade yourself and uplift your 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 spirit, you know what I'm saying, and your attitude, you know what I'm saying, and, and try to bring this love into your life. You know what I'm saying? So when you see that, you know, it can be easier for you to forget about, you know what I'm saying, um, bodies dropping, man, because it, the body's been dropping for years, and, and it, I mean, it's what you want to do. You want them to just keep, keep dropping till you drop and, and, and your kids, they, till they drop and, 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 and till they kids drop, like, I mean, if it don't stop, or I mean, you know, even if it never stops, that don't mean we can't temper it a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. That don't mean we can't try, like, because as far as my area, we don't really get along with too much nothing in Watts, like, Almost like you know everybody hate us, you know what I'm saying. But at the same time, we not we not a likable gang, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. We not the type of friendly people for you to like. So it's understandable why everybody hate us. But at the same time, a lot of that got to do with us yeah. because of our attitudes and our mentalities and how we want to. We do everything by ourselves. And we don't need nobody and, and and fuck everybody and all that. And we we got to change our mentality too. You know what I'm saying. If we if we expect things for change for us for the better we got to change for the better mm, man. we still gonna be who we are but you got to change for the better if you expect better results and that's why it's a new and improved great street man yeah. this is the best time right now to do business with us hit me up i don't yeah. care who you is if you want to do business with us hit me up we not with none of, as far as like people that's doing business with us we not with no scalish stuff or none of that we're gonna treat you right we're going to show you the in and outs of, of, of what we got to offer. And uh, we're going to do real good business, man. We're going to take care of you. Like, right now is the time. <laughs> if it ever been the time, right now is the time. I got a movie uh, that's, that's coming out uh, soon, too, man. They're going to be uh, recording in the projects, man. We're working on a movie right now. You know, I got I got some stuff that's, that's already out on Netflix. It's, uh, it's called um, Hyper Hard Boy or Gourmet Report. Uh, season one, episode two. That's already out. I did another episode with Netflix like uh, some months ago. I, I don't believe it's out yet. You know okay. what I'm saying? And, you know, I, I was on the um, the uh, uh, Bloods and Crips Peace Treaty. Um, I did that, as you mentioned, and stuff for Alex Alonzo. Yeah. And then don't don't forget uh, the hood vlogs. You know. Yeah, hood vlogs. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. 
Definitely, man. Yeah. Kev Mac videos, all there, man. Dude, it's been See, a pleasure. You know what? Somebody hit me about uh -huh. Kev Mac uh, today. Oh, dude. You know what I'm saying? Dude. So I'm, I, I might do that. Dude, Shout out to man. Baby Winky, man. Dope boy. He's been That's doing dope. this stuff for us, too, man. I'll you be feel looking me? out for that, man. G E E D E E. Grape ST is his Instagram. Make sure you hit him up. We're 100% behind you, man. I'm a donate personally, and I encourage everybody out there to donate too. And uh, hopefully, I can have you on the show again soon, man. All right, thank you. All Appreciate right, have it. a good night, man. I'll talk to you soon. All right, you All right, too. Peace, man. Yeah, man. Another great episode of Dusty Vision Radio, Super Audio Network. Dre Day, what do you say? Let's get the fuck out of here. Hell yeah. All right. Every Thursday, 7 p.m. right here, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Super Audio Network. Thanks for joining the show. I'll see you next week. Peace. Peace.